Hey, good morning, everybody. Thanks for clicking on the video. This is David Pendleton, and now we're going to be covering the final nine holes of the pro level of the Palm Tree Open Tournament. So congratulations for making it this far. It's been another, you know, fun tournament week. You know, I hope you like my content. If you do, please become a subscriber. If you're not one already, please take a moment there to hit that thumbs up button. I would say, in my opinion, the, the back nine wins... Uh, were much harder than the front nine wins. So it's going to make playing the, the back nine a little bit more challenging. But the good news is here we can break down some of these shots and, you know, try to get some of these shots to fall for you that didn't fall for me. But regardless, you know, we still got some good looks at some things. Uh, we got some good eagle opportunities, especially starting off here at hole number one. Hole number one, we're going to go ahead and play a slice. Now, uh, you know, of course, here I'm using the extra mile nine. My my starting point here is going to be the green inner ring is going to be to the right of that first bush. And what I'm looking to do is put it right up against the right hand side of the rough line, just like that. If you have like an extra mile level eight, um, I would probably move this over a little bit to the left hand side. But you're absolutely, if you don't have an extra mile nine, you're absolutely going to at least want to take one shot at a practice token to make sure that you do have this shot lined up right. Uh, executing the drive is not difficult because we're going to be doing a full slice here. We're not going to be worrying about hitting perfect. We're going to go full curl, full slice, and then we're going to let this ball rip down the fairway. Always light shots like these where you don't have to worry about hitting perfect. This ball takes off very nicely. As you're going to see here, we get a great camera angle, and it shoots us up the top here. Now, you might be wondering why I don't go with a little bit more top spin to get even further up. The reason is, is because if you get a stronger wind, or you don't get as much, or you get more of a crosswind push from, from right to left, so if your needle is flicking a little bit more than what mine is, um, if you use some extra top spin, that rough right there that you can just see coming to the left-hand side, uh, the wind might push you that way, and that extra topspin might get you to roll in. That one bar of topspin, I found, is working very well, uh, regardless of the wind angle that you get. So like I said, give it a try, but this is a great way to play a hole number one, in my opinion. Going to leave us here for a shot to pin. I do want you to notice the elevation, okay? I am playing this minus 10%, so we're playing this shot uphill got to make sure you put that in your app correctly so minus 10 percent i'm playing max distance of my inbringer um you know in practice mode i tried to go full top spin like we like to do with the inbringer the ball guideline is just way too glitchy here i'm going with two bars of backspin you have to remember that when you use backspin with the inbringer you got to make sure that ball guideline is like bouncing into the hole Okay, if you don't have a flat ball guideline. So you see here I'm bouncing into the cup. Perfect ball. And we do exactly what we wanted the ball to do. Go in the hole, starting off hole number one on an eagle. Hole number two, you know, we're just going to fast forward through this. You can use a Titan. You can use a Kingmaker, whatever you want. Of course, here I'm using a Kingmaker. Because, you know, I'm still in contention to try to get a top five or top ten at this point. So I'm trying to reduce these wins in pro to try to pick up some extra drops. Because I'm not playing with money balls, but, you know, people in tier three definitely are. So um, Kingmakers is my way of reducing the wind whenever I'm in contention to win. But this is nothing special, everybody. This is just another drive from fairway to fairway. As we talked about, this fairway slopes from right to left. I'm sorry, from left to right. So we just got to make sure we account for that on our drive. But you already know that because you've been playing it all tournament. Here, I'm just playing one for one. Uh, I didn't get enough distance uh, or on the right-hand side to even try to play the rough bump. And I don't even think the rough bump is going to be there with the Kingmaker when we're getting a flicker of headwind like we are now. Too difficult to execute a rough bump in this wind. So here, we're just trying to do the best that we can to get this ball guy line to hole. Without going crazy with the top spin, uh, I'm leaving it here, you know, about a square and a half short of the pin. Like I said, I'm pulling it one for one, so this will be a 5.6 ring pull. Perfect ball. 
and a little bit short, and we need to pull more rings than that. So, um, let me double check this replay here real quick. Uh, it was very early here. I'm sorry, four, five, one. Yeah. So I want you to play it one for one. That's why I put in the graphic. I only pulled this one 5.1. So, you know, I put in here for you to add more elevation, basically, and play this one one for one with the wind. Tough one to get an albatross on, though. Now, this one right here, man, I, t I kid you not, I really needed a hole-in-one. Like, at this point, if I don't get a hole-in-one, um, I'm not going to get a top 10, okay? So, I needed this drop. I kid you not, I wasted seven practice tokens <laughs> and seven kingmakers to try to figure this hole out on a rough bump. I couldn't get it there, everybody. Um, it, it's just way, way too difficult uh, in this type of wind. To get it right now sometimes i was landing on the green uh, that wasn't the problem like like landing on the green and getting the birdie wasn't a problem it was finagling like the landing spot and the spin and everything to try to get this shot right and it just wasn't consistent so we're gonna have to play this the same way we do in tour 10 shootouts we're gonna take a grizzly um and we're going to just go over here on the left-hand side of the fairway. You can see I'm putting my yet my uh, red ring on the rough line there. As far as spin goes, we always go with max side spin to the left when we play this way. And um, in this wind angle, we're going to go with one bar back spin. You see what the ball guy line looks like. We're going to come way right-hand side of the pin. But what we do is we use curl to, to counter that. We're always with a lot of heavy curl on this hole. Sometimes it's just hard to gauge how much, but I hit a great ball to the right, which stinks because, man, who, I mean, look at that. Who knows what would have happened with a perfect ball? Um, you know, we roll the pin on a great shot, but regardless, this curl is going to be tough to duplicate um, and to get it 100% right, especially depending on your wind strength that you get. So that's kind of how we play that one. You know, this hole, like I said, has been giving me problems on pro. Uh, making it to the green consistently uh, at this point though it wasn't really worth like using uh, many practice tokens to figure anything out but here i'm playing 10 percent elevation you have to push your rings instead of pull take a note at the op that i'm using and um you know about a fourth of a ball of curl to the right this was already at max target and you can see here the cam wrangle you know we're going to get stuck in the bunker and that was even with a good amount of op the nice part is, though, is that, you know, this is a par four. So even though we're in the bunker, we're going to be picking up a birdie for sure. But there is a funnel here to find, and I'll show you how to find it. Uh, really, you just start off with max side spin to the left. And then from there, you just kind of move your ball guideline around until you get a nice, consistent spot. Here, we do hit a perfect ball. That's always going to help. You might be able to get away with this with a minor great left or a minor great right. I'm not saying that you can, but, you know, perfect shot, and it goes into the hole, and we do pick up the eagle still. So we'll take it. But that one for me was a hard one to, left, to land on green. Here, at least we have a good wind angle to try to figure out the dial this one in. I want you to try it 35% at max. So try this one 35% at max. This is about 0.8 bars of top spin which, you know, is pretty consistent. I did take a few balls here to practice just because it's only a navigator, you know, and I got a million of those laying around. So I kind of take a look at where I'm aiming. You'll notice that my ball guideline is pointing to the hole. And if you notice, like, where the hole is located, it's in the dark green vertical row of squares. And my ball guideline is kind of right there on the right-hand side of that dark green vertical row almost where the dark green and light green meet. So kind of playing like right down the middle of that seam right there. So that was pulled about nine rings and six and a half mile per hour wind. It's pretty close though. I mean, for a difficult par three, that's pretty close. You could try to play this one 35% elevation and you can try to copy my landing spot in practice mode if you're in contention to do really well. And that's one that you can probably get dialed in for a hole-in-one. 
It might take you two or three looks to get it figured out, but that would be a good one to land because a lot of people won't, you know, especially if you pick up hole one, um, hole three, maybe you get a lucky hole in one, hole four, you can eagle, um, and then that hole five shot. I mean, you could start off with a really, really strong back nine. Here, you know, I like to go bombs away on this hole, but when I went to load the hole and I saw we were getting a f um, headwind, uh, that was, just wasn't going to happen. So we're just going to play it safe, playing that kingmaker, four top, three left. You want your ball guy line aiming down the middle of the sand just like that, okay? If you kind of notice in another landmark position, like a reference point, my white ring right there is on that rough line. So ball guy line, middle of the sand, white ring right there on the rough line. We're going to push these rings. 10% at max. You see here, we're kind of pushing into overpower. So we know we're going to have to use overpower on this shot. Now you see here, I'm not using a ton. This is just about half a ball of overpower. Even hit a great ball. But this shot's always been pretty consistent. It just comes right up here down the middle of the fairway. And we're good to go for shot number two. Shot number two, I'm playing with my Cataclysm. You can play with whatever wood club you like. Some people like playing this with the Guardian. Some people like playing this one with your big dog. Again, Cataclysm, just fine. This is 0% elevation shot at max. Definitely not playing this one for an Albatross, like I always say. We're just looking to pick up an Eagle here and just run away from this hole. All right, so that's that. Takes us on to this shot. Now, I'll tell you, um, again, I normally play this one with the Navigator, and I normally play at 25%. I started off with one practice token with the Navigator, and I immediately got caught in between clubs whenever we tried to play the Sniper uh, shot where we bounce off the fringe and towards the pin. So I kept getting caught in between clubs, so it just wasn't worth it because when we use a Navigator ball on Pro, we're going to have a pretty variable winds. Like, you know, you might have 7 miles an hour. I might have, you know, I don't know, 5.9, whatever the case may be. So if you get a much higher wind and you try to pull your rings at 25%, you're just not going to be able to. So we're going to have to go with a rough bump. That was a lot of talking to explain why we're going with a rough bump this time. But that's what we're doing. Three bars of side spin to the left. 10% at mid. And you saw this about 6.1 top. Here it's just about trying to, you know, find the right top spin to get this ball to the hole. So three left is good. We always want to start there. Six top. You can see we got the orange ring up on the fringe line and the orange ring dipping down towards the sand line. That's a really good reference point. We do get that you get that perfect ball here. This is another one, man, to where, you know, it's just like, oh, my gosh. You know, you're talking so close. Speed is perfect. All that's good. Um, so that's another one you can just make very, very slight tweaks to get that ball to drop in for a hole-in-one. All right, we're on the final two holes. We're going to do the same old song and dance here. We're taking that quarterback and sniper combo. Really not a lot to show here on the drive, but like I always do, I play this one at the plus nine yard mark with a blue ring on the rough. Got a million of these replays. Don't need to save another one. But you'll see here, we come on very nicely onto the fairway, making us shot number two down towards the pin here. Shot number two, I want you to try at 15% at max, Okay. 15% at max, I think, is going to get us really, really close to an extra eagle. Also, please take a moment there to hit that thumbs up button if you enjoy my content. Three bars of backspin, half a bar of side spin to the right. Ball guide line, you see there just slightly favoring the right-hand side of the cup, just slightly. But like I said, I do want you to try 15%. This right here is pulled at 20%. Perfect ball. And we just pull it a little bit too much. That's why I want you to take a half a percent of elevation off from what I played. 
All right, this is it. It's the final hole of the tournament. Please become a subscriber. If you'd like to become a member and, and you know, help support our time or my time that I take to do this, that would be awesome too. If you'd rather do it through a PayPal, if you have the means to do so, that's in the comment section below. Anything would be much appreciated. Here we are getting um, that flicker of headwind like um, on hole nine. So I'm only using a Kingmaker. We can easily make it with the Kingmaker. If you want to use a Berserker, I don't blame you. It's going to make the drive a heck of a lot easier. But Kingmaker, definitely doable, as you see here. You know, we're going with six top, three bars of side spin to the left. I'm backing my, my target up so that I can properly adjust my rings as so. I'm using just a little bit of OP. See, I don't even have to use a lot of OP, and we still get there. One bounce, two bounce, and we're good to go. That's going to bring us in here for shot number two. I'm bringing my Cataclysm just because, you know, I figured we were going to get that flicker of headwind. Uh, we could have probably played this one with the Sniper, I bet. So looking back at it, you know, I wish I would have played with the Sniper. Uh, but regardless, this one's still going to be a little bit more of a difficult wind angle to pick up an Alba on. But we get a perfect ball, and we head on down here. And it's not too terrible for, you know, your first shot with a Cataclysm towards pin. Only missing by half a green square to the right. So... You can break that one down. You can readjust, make some tweaks. I hope you all kick butt. Let me know how you do in the comments, and then I will see you next week for the 9-Hole Cup. Thanks, everybody.